request. We would love to join our faith with your prayer, but we'd actually also love to share the victory God's had in your life because there might be someone else in the room that he needs to hear your testimony. And so I encourage you, if that is you here tonight, there's prayer and praise cards that are out on the concierge desk. After service, go grab one, grab a pen and write down your prayer or write down your praise and we can just share and we join together because that's what the church is. The church is a body of people that join together, that share together and run this life so we can encourage each other. But as I said, if you're new here, we have so many pl- avenues that we'd like to get you connected. And we believe that the church isn't just something you attend. Uh, it is actually a body or a people that you belong to. And so we have things called life groups that are just like little church things or meetings, but over dinner tables, over coffee tables, over food, over um, tea, whatever you're into, where we just get to walk life together. And so if you want to get connected there's, and find your next step, we'd love to have a conversation. There's a QR code on the back of the chair that you can scan and it'll take you to the landing page of all truth that is not Google, apparently. So crazy times. Um, Or you can see anyone with a host tag on or the yes bar on the way out. And we'd love to have a conversation with you and get you connected. Um, But Gypsy, where are you? There you are. (laughs) Gypsy, would you come and tell us what's coming on on the great marathon that is the middle of this seating all the way. Can we welcome Gypsy as she comes? Thank you. It's my new seat now. Like I get to sit next to Pastor Carolina and it's a good view. Um, Yeah, so we have some pretty interesting things happening, church, and I just love it. Um, One of the most amazing things that we get the opportunity to do is every Tuesday we get to come here and pray. Um, And it's always an emotional time for me when I think about revival and I think about the Remnant Room because I know my breakthroughs started in this room, on this floor, in a Remnant Room. So come, we come here for prayer, for healing. Um, People just find their hope again in this space. And if you have none, the people in this room have some to give. Um, So come to the Remnant Room this Tuesday. Um, We hold it every month. So if you can't come this Tuesday, put it in your calendar for next Tuesday and the next and the next. Book that space. Um, So yeah, we've got that. And then our next one that we have is so exciting. It brings me so much joy is SWB, Secret Women's Business. So it's not much of a secret. All the men know about it. We go there. Um, And we have the most fun. And we literally get to have joy this time. So I think it's an excuse to party. And uh, Pastor Carolina gave us a message last week, if you weren't in the room, about party, celebration, and doing it well. And I just love that that's been the constant theme this year. So SWB, Secret Women's Business, is following through with that this year. And so it's in July, only $90 for three hot nights. Um, We have amazing speakers lined up just for the women. So women, get your ticket. Men, buy your girl a ticket. Boaz, I'm looking at you. Um, If you don't know, he's... You know, my fiance. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so get a ticket, get them to buy your ticket for you, and get a new dress. It's 70s theme, so go all out, colors. Um, but we have a video for you, so watch that and enjoy. We'll be right back after this message. to SWB, you must get a perm and flares. That is a requirement, dress up. Well, 70s are coming back. What is it, fashion is circular, apparently. 
And so get a part of that. And uh, yeah, SWB is a good time. I've actually been there every SWB for the last recent years. So serving. Serving. Uh, and so if you are keen to serve, you can be a part of that too. But we're going to come around our moment of generosity before we hear the word. And we have one of our youth pastors coming and bringing the word tonight, Ash Smith. And so, but right before we do, we are going to get into this moment of worship through an act of generosity. And uh, tonight we're going to come around a scripture in uh, Timothy, and it says this, it'll be on the screen, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it, but we have food and clothing and we'll be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, people eager for money have actually wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. And... There's this speaking here of this concept of contentment. And as Christ followers, as we sit in the provision of God, as we sit in the trust of God providing for us, we actually find this state of, I'm not worried. I'm actually content with whatever God provides for me. Paul speaks elsewhere, being like, it doesn't matter if I'm in excess or I'm in lack, I'm always content because God has provided for me. And in Matthew, it also talks about, therefore I do tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat, what you'll drink, about your body, what you'll wear, not even flares. It is more about, it is more than food and more than clothes. And this idea of worry is actually the antithesis of contentment. You can flip it on the other side saying an act of generosity brings around a trust that pierces worry. And I know in my own life, I, I spent some time overseas coming back I didn't have a job, and if you've been overseas, Euro cost Australians quite a lot. And so coming back, I didn't have a job and that sort of thing. And I find myself in a position where you can start to feel the tentacles of worry. You can start to feel the, the things wrap around your heart, and you're like, no, I cannot afford to be worried. And an act of generosity over and above my tithe actually set me in a place where I need to stand on the Word of God and the provision of God and push back not just about money, but push back anything that might take away my attention from running the race for Jesus Christ. And so just this concept that money is just a commodity, but don't let it be the desire of our heart, like anything. Don't let the car be the desire of your heart. Don't let the popularity be the desire of your heart. Don't let the recognition be the desire of your heart. Let it be faithfully serving the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, as He has so died for us and chosen us. And so as we come around this, this moment of tithe tonight, know that your tithe speaks to your heart and it speaks to Jesus, a trust and a contentment and it positions us in that way. Many ways to give, they're on the screen behind me or you can scan that QR code, there's always so pathways there. The buckets are about to come around, so let's pray. Lord Father, we just thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to submit our heart, to submit our faith at your feet, to submit our worry even at your feet and just say, God, you are our provider. We trust in you. We look to you and we are thankful, Lord, that you can transform something as material as money into a position of gratitude and a position of um, contentment in our lives, which is far more valuable. Faith being far more valuable than finance. So Lord, we thank you and we praise your name. Let this offering, let this tithe glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The buckets are going to come around. And uh, a little bit about our preacher tonight. We uh, have the same taste in t-shirts. And uh, a mighty man of God, a mighty couple of God, Ash and Marlene, as they run uh, youth ministry. And uh, actually come off the back of a, a rally gathering called Block Party a couple of weeks ago. Just seeing so many new people come into the house friends being activated, people meeting and encountering Jesus in a real way. So why don't you stand to your feet and welcome the word and the man that give it as Ash comes and brings it tonight. So good, so good. Are we on? Let's keep giving that praise to Jesus. Let's go. 
Yeah, Father, I thank you so much for what you're going to do in this place tonight, God. We give you all of the glory and all of the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, feel free to take a seat, guys. Take a seat. It is good to see you in the house, hey. Let me just um, get this laptop open with one hand. How good is that? Yeah, we got it. Awesome. Hey, I just want to start off by honoring uh, the whole pastoral team here at City Point. Um, Pastor Carolina, Pastor Cam, Pastor Amanda, all the other pastors. Um, we got like a whole Italian thing going on here. There's many, many types of pastors. Um, it's great. So we just want to give you guys so much honor. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing, the weight that you're carrying spiritually. We love you guys. Could not be doing this without you. Hey, um, yeah, absolute blessing to sit under you guys. Hey, um, so yeah, awesome. How good? Uh, tick. Tick, awesome. No. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I'm super keen to get into this preaching series, hey. Uh, if you weren't here this morning, it's about uh, outsiders. And I really think that uh, for every person in this room, that this is going to be a great preaching series, that you're not going to want to miss out on a single one of these messages. Like, if you've been a Christian for a while, this is going to be a really great preaching series for you, because um, it's just nice every now and then to come into the house and get a bit of affirmation that it's actually all right that you're an outsider. It's, a, it's all right that you're in your workplace and you feel like you stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, is that the, the sore toe? What, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, or, or like in your, in your home, if, if you're in a non-Christian environment, if you're in your school, it's just nice every now and then to just, just be reaffirmed that it's all right that you're an outsider and that God's actually going to use that to bring people to Him. So that's great. If you have been a Christian for like two seconds, this is going to be a great preaching series because um, you're very quickly noticing that you are an outsider. It was like your family, your friends, your school, they're coming to you asking, like, what changed? What happened to you? Why are you different? This is going to be a great preaching series for you because you're going to get a bit firm footing of just like, okay, it's all right that I'm an outsider. God's going to use me as an outsider to bring people into the kingdom. And if you are not a Christian here, welcome. Um, this is going to be a great preaching series for you because if like your mum or your auntie or your mate or somebody from school, your grandma, whatever it is, if they dragged you in here, it's because they want you to be different. And this preaching series is going to show you why that's actually in your best interest to be different. The title of the message tonight is The Bread Makes Us Different. Um, this is an inclusive message, though. If you're celiac, uh, you're welcome in the kingdom. It's all right. It's, it's all good. Um, the bread makes us different. So we're going to be diving into a bunch of scripture tonight. Um, but before we do, I just want to touch on the fact that the Bible is in its nature, it's meditation literature. So what that means is that every scripture is meant to be read with the rest of the Bible in mind. And what happens is over thousands and thousands of years of history, God has painted this beautiful narrative where there's so many different images and themes that build and build and build. And then you step back and you see this beautiful tapestry of scripture and it all points back to Jesus. And it's beautiful. So we're going to, um, I, I was trying really hard to think of, um, of an example to demonstrate what this looks like. Um, and I did a bit of research, I found a movie, I don't know if you guys have seen it, like me personally, I just watched like The Chosen and The Shack and um, so that one, Prayer Room, what, War Room, that one, yeah, so it's like a worldly movie, I don't know if you guys have heard of Jaws, have you guys heard of that one? Yeah, um, and like the theme, the theme song in Jaws, do you guys know that one? The, those two notes, can you sing it? Yeah, right, yeah, and we all know what that means, that's two notes, right? But what those two notes do to your heartbeat is ridiculous. So it's like you get these two notes, but because of what the director's done, how he's built upon the images and built upon the images and built upon the images, I don't care how old you are, if you watch that movie, you swim in a pool, you hear those notes, you're hopping out of the pool because there's a shark in the pool and it's coming to eat you. Um, <laughs> so so that's, that's kind of what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be exploring uh, bread within that picture. We're going to be building up a little bit on those two notes and we're going to be coming back at the scripture with a fresh set of lenses. Are you guys ready? Yeah. So good. So um, in youth ministry, we love the Bible. It is what it is. Um, so what we do is when we read a scripture, I'll tell you like the book of the scripture and then you go, oh, and then I'll tell you the, uh, the chapter within that book and then you get more excited and then I'll tell you the verse. Just go crazy. Um, have a good time with it. Just don't throw anything at me, please. Um, okay, so the first scripture is 1 Corinthians Whoa. chapter 11, Whoa. verse 23. So good. It's going to be up here on the Sky Bible if you didn't bring your own. Um, so this is uh, the book of Corinthians. So we've got the Apostle Paul here writing to one of the early churches, just helping them suss it out, helping, it, helping them figure out what Christianity is and what that looks like. And this is Paul. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread and he, 
had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of, um, of me. I did it again. I gave them so much scripture, and I'm not using all of it, so <laughs> sorry, media. Um, so this, in this scripture, Jesus is saying, I am bread. Uh, Now, unlike the Catholics, sorry, uh, we don't believe that he is actually a loaf of bread. Um, So, we're going to be diving into what that actually looks like for Jesus to be bread. We do have one more scripture before we jump into the Old Testament. If we could bring, oh, no, not yet, sorry. Yes, nice. Okay, so it is in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 35. So good. So this is the book of John. Um, If you're not familiar with the Bible, one of the first four in the New Testament about uh, Jesus' disciples, uh, just giving an account of of what he said and did because it was pretty wild. And Jesus said to them, so Jesus talking obviously, "Um, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So again, Jesus has a couple of times already said that he is bread. All right, man, that's cool. Um, So we're going to find out what that means. Okay, so we're jumping into another scripture. I hope you guys are strapped in for Deuteronomy 16, verse 1. So, so good. So a bit of context here. Uh, The Israelites, God's chosen people, were under the oppression of Pharaoh for hundreds and hundreds of years, and he's just delivered them out from under slavery, and they are now free people, and... Uh, Jesus, God, you know, another conversation, um, is teaching them something. Okay, so it says this. It says, observe the month of Abib, I don't know how to say that, um, and keep the Passover for the Lord your God, uh, for in the month of Abib, uh, the Lord Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night, and uh, you shall offer the Passover sacrifice to the Lord your God from the flock or or the herd um, at the place the Lord will choose. To make his name dwell there, you shall eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days you shall eat it with unleavened bread again of the affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in haste that all the days of your life you may remember the day when you came out of the land of Egypt. So, what is this scripture teaching us about bread? Well, Um, not how to make it, um, but what it is teaching us is we're starting to build upon the images of what bread meant. Because Jesus was a man who sat with the Scripture, meditated on the Scripture, so he very much knew what he was doing when he said, I'm bread. And, And the images that we're starting to picture up here is that bread was used to remind the Israelites of what God's done. So the bread is no longer just representing a loaf of bread, but we're now getting that it's representing a remembrance that God is faithful, that He delivers. It's also representing um, God's faithfulness. It's also representing God's judgment and mercy. Yeah? So we're going to jump into another scripture, learning heaps about bread tonight. So it's coming out of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 4 through 5. We actually do have another one as well that we're going to skip to, but I might not do the woes, sorry. Um, So this one says... Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven, and you people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them whether they will walk in the law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare, uh, on the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, I will be, it will be twice as much as they gather daily because they would rest on the seventh. And then if we could get that next little bit up. So this is, after they've done it. So it's Exodus 16, verse 13. Do we get that one as well? I'm very sorry if we didn't. Oh, how good. You guys are amazing. Let's give it up for media. So this is a long one. Actually, I might take a drink for a second. Can you guys just like do prayer or something holy for a second? Awesome. Thanks for that. Whoa. How good. All right, so it says, in the evening, quail came and covered the camp, um, and in the morning, dew lay on the, uh, dew lay around the camp, not dews, dew, dew water, um, and when the dew had gone up, there um, was on the face of the wilderness fine, uh, fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is this? 
They did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it, each of you, as much as you can eat. You shall take an omer, which is just like a measurement, according to the number of the persons that each of you has in the tent. I, and the people of Israel did so. They gathered some, some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, uh, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, but whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, let no one leave any of it until morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it until morning. And the bread, uh, and it bread, not that bread, bread, worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Fair enough, I'd be pretty cranky too. Um, But what is this scripture teaching us about bread? This scripture is, again, echoing what Jesus is talking about when he says that he is bread. What this is, is is the people of God coming out into the wilderness, into a place of vulnerability, into a place of reliance on God, where their whole sustenance, their life, is completely dependent on their faith in God. And, And it's not something that they are meant to be storing up and hoarding up for themselves, this this grace, this mercy, this provision. It's not something that they're storing up for themselves and that that's actually bad for them. Yeah? So just from these two scriptures, there's many more. I encourage you to go on that Easter hunt. We're getting that bread is, is now representing God's faithfulness, God's justice, God's mercy, God's deliverance, God's grace, Um, God's provision and us as his people, our faith and our trust and our obedience in him. Yeah? So this is biblically what bread is. So now we're going to jump back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. How good. Um, So now we're coming at this with that lens again. So we're not anymore just hearing those two notes but we're now expecting a shark, yeah? So when we come back to this scripture, we're fresh in our mind of what bread actually means, right? So it says this. Um, We might skip to, uh, if we, no, we'll just do the whole thing, hey? Um, If if I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was portrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So remember that other scripture also talked about remembrance. And now we're coming at this scripture with an appreciation that Jesus is saying, my body is bread. My body is provision, is grace, is mercy, is provision. That you are meant to place your faith in me as bread for your sustenance, for your life, for your deliverance from oppression. And how do we, how do we eat this? How do we partake of this bread? What is the significance? Well, if you know the gospel, you know where I'm going. If you don't, that's all right. That's what I'm here for. So the gospel is, Paul writes in Romans that the wages of sin is death. That there's, there's these moral things that we can do wrong where we offend God, where we sin against God. There's these shortcomings where it's an archery term that if you miss the mark, you've sinned. All of these things, they separate us from a God who is holy, who is life, and it leads us to death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. And the way that we, the way that we access that eternal life is by placing our faith in Jesus. In the same way that the Israelites waited every morning for new grace to come down from heaven, so too we place our faith in God and He provides for us and He atones for our sins because when He says that my body is broken for you, what that represents is that Jesus went to the cross. He lived the perfect life. He did not earn death. He did not sin, but He he died. And when when He died, when that bread was broken, it was broken on our behalf. So he took the punishment that we deserved, that we earned, and then through him, we have eternal life. Through him, we get access to the bread of life. That's beautiful. Man, we've got so much time. This is great. Um, so what does that mean? What, what do we do with that information? What do we do with, with the fact that um, through placing our faith in God, that we can be made righteous and whole and that he'll provide from us a, for us and that he will atone for our sins and that through him we are delivered up out of our captivity. Well, 
the Bible's pretty long. So we're looking at another scripture. How good. So if we... Um, if you've got paper Bibles, part of the paper Bible revival, get it out. Uh, so this is the last scripture for tonight, so this has got to be a big one, okay? So we're reading out of the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 17. How oh, good. Okay, so this is, uh, again, one of the Gospels, so we've got two out of four, that's not bad. Um, so this is written by Matthew. So... Uh, they said to him, this is the disciples talking to Jesus. Actually, let's paint a bit of a picture. So this is, again, we're meant to be hearing these two notes as we've just read scripture. We're meant to be interpreting the rest of scripture. So what we see here is Jesus um, was in the, the wilderness, essentially, like he's away from civilization. And then there's a whole group of people that have come and followed him into the wilderness. And they're sitting at his feet and they're awaiting on teaching. So we should be already hearing Exodus in that kind of language. And then we see this absolutely crazy stuff. Um, so they're all getting a bit hungry because they've been listening to Jesus for a minute, um, just like you guys probably are talking about bread a lot. Um, so we have five loaves. We have five loafers. Um, we have five loaves here and two fish. And he said to them, bring them here to me. When he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, he said a blessing, he broke the loaves, he gave it to the disciples, and the disciples gave it to the crowds. And when they ate, they were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets of broken pieces left over. In the context of everything that we just explored, everything that bread means, we got two application points for that. The first one is, there's enough bread for you. There's enough bread for you. What Jesus did on the cross, his broken body provides you with enough atonement, enough mercy, enough grace, enough provision, enough sustenance, that it doesn't matter what you came in here with, it doesn't matter what you are struggling with in your life, there is bread enough. You can't sin your way out of heaven because there is bread enough for you. The second point is, there's leftovers. There's bread enough for every person sitting in this room. And if there was 100,000 people in this room, there would be bread enough for every person in this room and leftovers. That's crazy. Because there's empty chairs, but there's no cap into the kingdom of heaven. It's not like there's a long list and Jesus is going to be like, oh, is that 1,001? Sorry, mate enough room up here. There's, there's leftovers. There's enough bread. So we should tell people. We should tell people about it. We should say, man, this is, this is this crazy dude. He lived like 2,000 years ago and he came into my heart and I partook of this bread and I became a new creation and my sin was as far as the east is from the west and I was, I was made anew and I was made whole and I was freed up out of oppression from sin, from bondage, from the world. He'd set me free. And now I live in the wilderness and I wait every day and bread comes from heaven and there is leftovers for you. So we're going to go into a bit of a ministry moment. Um, So if we could get keys up, just really feel it on my heart um, that I want to see the creatives run. No, not really. (laughs) Um, Just really feel it on my heart that there's, there's an anointing here for evangelism, that there's people on this region, in your workplace, in your school, in your family that need the bread. They do. So um, I'm going to start off this ministry time um, with just a prayer over all of you. So if you don't want that anointing for evangelism, probably step outside for a sec. Um, And then we're going to get the ministry team to come stand up the front. And if you feel a call on your heart that you just want to be sharing that bread, you want to be speaking to that person in your workplace, in your school, in your family about Jesus, I just encourage you to come up the front. We'd love to pray for you. Um, it can often be intimidating talking to somebody about Jesus. So just knowing that the Holy Spirit is with you and that He's not going to leave you alone and you're not going to run out of words, um, it's just so encouraging. So if we could get the ministry team to, to come up the front and then um, as we come back into this bridge uh, or whichever part of the song, I don't know how music works, um, just if, if the Holy Spirit is stirring you, just come up to the front. Just come up to the front. There's no need to be ashamed. There's no need to care about what anybody else thinks about you. This is just a time between you and God where you're saying, just just use me, just send me, I'll go. So I'm going to start us off with some prayer. And then, um, yeah, if you guys want to come up front, that'd be awesome. So let's all bow our heads, close our eyes. Just 
Jesus, I thank you so much for what you did for us on that cross. I thank you so much that we've been made anew, that we've been made whole. Father, I pray for every single person in this room. I pray for a clarity when you speak to us. I pray for a boldness to step out in faith. I rebuke the fear of man in this place, God. But let us fear you above all else. That we just want to see your kingdom come. That we just want to see your will be done. That we want to see, uh, like, that we want to see revival in our region, God. That we want to see people come to know you. That we want to see people be set free from their sin. That we want to live on a peninsula that is defined not by sin, but by grace. So, Father, I pray right now that you'll just release an anointing on every single person in this room. That they will be sent and commissioned to preach the gospel whether that's in, in their local context, God, or whether they're going to be sent out on mission trips, God, I just pray that you will be with them always.